Okay, today I'm going to talk about the sand lab. I've wanted to do a sand lab with my classes for many years, and uh, last year I was able to get a bunch of different samples of sand, and um, I put together this lab. We did it with my classes last year, worked really well. Then I made some improvements to it, went through it again this year. Um, it was even better with those improvements, and um, I'm going to show you now some of the things you need to do and how it works on a very basic level. Okay, let's go through some of the materials that uh, you'll need for this. First of all, of course, you need sand samples. Um, the bigger the variety is, the better, but um, ocean sand as well as uh, river sand is also good. Uh, I put them in these clear glass jars. It really makes the uh, um, stand out quite a bit, and you can look at them with the naked eye very closely, make sure they're labeled. Uh, also, what I have, each student gets one of these, and this is basically like the sand analysis form. So all of this is for one sand sample. Okay, each student fills this out. I usually have them work in groups of two, and then I have another one on the back, so so they could do two sand samples on one page. What I have is I have this. This has a uh, the uh, sort of a reference sheet I keep up front, kids to write down the location the, sa the sample was collected, who collected it, and when. Put that in there. This is a, a reference sheet that each group gets. The top part shows an example of uh, different, uh, the five different categories of sorting. Uh, this section here gives them a sense of the grain size, so they can choose the grain size. And then it has some uh, examples here of how rounded or angular it is, so they need that. Also, I like to have uh, pieces of paper, black and white, and that is to put the sand on, so it gives them good contrast when they're looking at it. Uh, I find that to be very, uh, very helpful. Also, I have a magnet here to test for any magnetic particles in the sand, and it is important to keep it in a plastic bag. Trust me, I learned this the hard way, because uh, you rub this over the sand, and if, you, if there is any magnetic particles in there, which is totally cool, it's very hard to get off, very hard to get off. So the plastic bag uh, is really necessary for this. So that's some of the materials, and uh, the magnifiers are also key. Okay, the magnification is a key part to this. Uh, what I do like about it, it can be very simple to use. So what I have right here, this is sort of my basic setup. I have a you know, plastic magnifier like this, which are you know pretty cheap, easy to come by. Most science classes have them. Put it in this uh, ring stand setup like this, and then students will slide it up and down, get it in focus on the sand, lock it down, and then it remains in focus. I found this is much better than just holding it with your hand. Um, from my experience. So there's that. That's pretty basic and easy. If you have these, I found these uh, magnifiers here to be quite good. If you have them around. So these little stand mag magnifiers. Uh, and then stepping up, if you have access to them, this is a whole other level. This is a dissecting microscope. And while those other magnifiers have magnification in the five to six times range, this can go up to 40 times. Uh, so this is very, uh, this is a whole nother level of detail of the sand, which is really cool if you have access to it, um, but not necessary. So how this works is like this. So I have my little black piece of paper. Students get their sand sample. They'll, they'll look at it uh, first with the naked eye. I can look at it like this make some basic observations. Then they just put a little bit on the, on the paper. And actually, a little bit is better than a lot. So you can just do a little bit of, a little pinch, just like that, and spread it out. That is actually better than a big pile. And then that way, your sand also goes a long way. Then you put it on the setup like this, OK? And really, uh, it's, it's best to use the smaller, magnif the smaller uh, lens portion, because the magnification is higher. In this case, it's six times. And the other thing, if you can see, I'm here by the window. The natural light from the window is vital to this. The overhead light in any school, in any classroom, is not going to be very good. But being near a window is key and really um, is, is necessary for this. And then students will, will go like this, get, oh yeah, that's totally cool. Get it in focus, lock it down. You can move it like this or move it with a pencil. Okay. And then their partner can, can look at it. And then they go through and sort of uh, do some of the observations necessary for this on that sample. Do you see that little one right there? I'll show you that. Right there. 
Now, when students are done with the uh, looking at it through the uh, magnifier, what I have them do is they take it off the stand and they get their magnet in the bag. And they just kind of rub it over like this. They kind of touch it right on there. And they're going to see uh, if there's any magnetic particles in there. Um, some sand does have a good amount of magnetic particles and because uh, that's uh, the bottom portion of the lab. In that same... Uh, area it has uh, fl uh, fluorescence is there any fluorescent minerals in there it also has asked whether it reacts with acid uh, I've done the fluorescence I have had that light out sometimes the acid I've never really had the ability to do it or um, so I just kind of skip those you can do those or not do those but uh, those are in there as well so that's the basics of the sand lab uh, I've done this a few two years now uh, it's been really successful the kids have liked it um, I like it for a few reasons one it's simple, basic, sand, easy to come by, equipment it, on a basic level is, is pretty easy. Um, it's one of those things too that sand, everyone's experienced sand, it's kind of ubiquitous, it's all over. People haven't given it much thought and once kids start looking at sand, even just with the naked eye comparing to different samples, they start realizing the difference the differences in sand and how there's more variety than they ever would have thought. Once they start looking at it under magnification, you go from, oh, this sand is cool, and you magnify it even six times. You're like, whoa, it's like a whole new world looking at it close up. And I've really seen that with the students. They really responded to that. If you have the opportunity to step up to a dissecting microscope like this, now we're talking 40 times magnification. So even from six times to 40, now you see a whole new world looking that closely, really seeing the surfaces. So, you know, that's really cool. And I think it's safe to say that students in my class who've been through this, they really, they won't look at sand the same way again. And, uh, you know, that's really, that's really what you're after, right? So, um, yeah, enjoy the sand lab. As I've said, one thing I really like about this lab is how simple and basic it is to do. The basic equipment, sand's easy to come by, and you can do it with almost any level of student, from little kids through high school. That's a great part of it. Um, to kind of take it to the next level or add some elements to it. Uh, one thing I do is when I was collecting the sand, I had the forethought to take videos of me collecting the sand in the real world, and I show those in class. I also show like a Google map sort of image as to where that location is. That gives a really real world element to it. Kids really respond to, to that. Um, so that part is good. That's something you could do. Other things that I do, and I do this as introductions. They could be done after the fact. One of the, the first thing I have them do is read a New York Times article. Uh, from maybe it's a few years back, this article now, but it uh, focuses on Dr. Rob Holman from Oregon State University, and he studies sand, and they read the article. The article's okay. There's a little video there about sand uh, deposition and movement along the coast, which is good, but uh, the key part of this is this interactive map uh, showing sand from across the world, which is the first introduction to the fact that sand can vary so, so much, so that part's really cool. Can, kids get a lot out of that. Another thing I have them do beforehand is... Um, this homework assignment here is listen to a podcast. It's a radio lab podcast, and the episode's called Fugo, and it's about these Japanese bombs that were um, sent and hit the U.S. during World War II, and sand is a key element. Uh, it's a key sort of clue to this. So it's a good introduction to realizing that sand varies and there's distinct sands from different locations in the world, and the kids really like it. It's about 19 minutes they have to listen to. And they like it because it's just a really good story. It's really well done. So kids have really responded well to that. Um, what else do I have? Another thing that I do in this class is when they come in to do this, the actual sand lab, I pretend like they work for some uh, 
uh, sand analysis company and they're a lab technician. And one thing I added this year was I would give these out, which are like ID badges for the sand company, you know, and uh, I have them tape a paper clip onto the back. And they put their name on it, it says clearance level D on it. And they put it on like this. It's a simple, like, goofy thing that uh, you'd be surprised, even with high school students. Uh, this goes a long way. So they added another level to it, uh, it's just kind of for fun. So there's probably a lot more that can be done. I know I have a number of other videos uh, that, I'll, that I'll link to, um, just about sand in general. And uh, as time goes on, I'm finding more and more of these. So it ends up being a, a wider, broader topic that you can do a lot more with than you would think at first. So it's cool. the symptoms but not affect the cause it's quite a bit like trying to heal a gunshot wound with gauze if you instead attempt to rest the pistol from the hand then i would not be able to equate my life with sand